Okay, so this is going to be the first video in my playlist on gases. And an important property of gases, uh, important enough to start with, I would say, is the pressure of a gas. And the pressure of a gas, pressure is, um, pr pressure is ubiquitous in, in nature. Um, your respiratory system causes differences in pressure inside your body in order to move air in and out of your body. Uh, the tire pressure uh, of the tires uh, in your vehicle is a uh, is an important thing for um, for uh, vehicle safety. Uh, the pressure that's inside a basketball is important for determining whether or not you can have fun with it. So pressure's all around us is what I'm trying to get at. So the definition of pressure is the force per unit area of a gas. So you can say that P equals F over A. So pressure is actually a derived unit. And obviously, depending on your units of force and your units of area, the, uh, the pressure can take on many different uh, values and it can have many different units. As we'll see in some of the coming videos, the pressure of a gas depends on the concentration of the gas, the volume of the gas, and the temperature of the gas. How does it depend on these three, these three things? Well, that's uh, something that we're going to go over in a later video when we talk about gas laws. But for now, I just want to talk about the pressure of a gas. So, where does the pressure of a gas come from? The pressure of a gas comes from collisions of gas particles with the surface of their container. And the sum of all of these collision forces uh, over per unit of area is the pressure. So you have thousands or millions or bajillions or whatever, trillions, I don't know, whatever, of these gas particles and many of them are colliding with each other and many of them are colliding with the surfaces of the container. The ones that are colliding with the surfaces uh, of the container um, contribute to the pressure of the gas. So now let's talk about some of the units, the common units of pressure. So the first unit of pressure that I want to talk about is the millimeter of mercury, or mmHg. And the millimeter of mercury, this unit originates from a barometer. So you kind of have to know how a barometer works in order to understand uh, millimeters of mercury. So here I have a diagram of a barometer. And Basically what a barometer is, it is it's a, uh, an upside down evacuated glass tube. So evacuated meaning the, um, it's in a vacuum, the uh, pressure has been sucked out of it. It's an evacuated glass tube that is suspended in a pool of mercury or some other dense metal. Mercury works well because it's liquid at room temperature. And what's going on here is that the atmospheric pressure just the pressure of the of the, whatever the surroundings is so the pressure of the room for instance that pressure is exerting a force downward onto the mercury which forces the mercury to climb up this column so the higher the atmospheric pressure is the higher the mercury level if the pressure uh, decreased then the mercury level uh, would also decrease. So it's actually a pretty simple setup. Um, a barometer is is not that hard to understand. So basically, this is what the um, what the unit uh, what the millimeter of mercury comes from. So basically, if the pressure is atmospheric, in other words, uh, it, if we are at atmo if, if it's just atmospheric pressure, the pressure of the atmosphere alone on Earth has the ability to force mercury up a column of 760 millimeters. So that means the atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. The atmosphere forces mercury this high in a barometer. So uh, another thing about the millimeter of mercury is that it's also called the uh, tor. So one millimeter of mercury is equal to one tor. And the tor uh, comes from a uh, physicist by the name of Evangelista Torricelli, an Italian physicist. And um, so, got to give credit where credit is due, I guess. He's, he's the guy who 
came up with the uh, first barometer that we know of. So that's uh, the millimeter of mercury and the tor. They're both the same thing. A lot of a lot of uh, chemists use them interchangeably. It's I think it's probably easier to say tor because it's only one syllable. So I usually say tor. So a second unit of pressure is uh, the atmosphere, or ATM. And this uh, unit of pressure comes from the average pressure at sea level. And that turns out to be 760 millimeters of HD, like I said before. The atmosphere pushes mercury 760 millimeters high in a barometer. So based on that, we say that one ATM is equal to 760 millimeters of HD. So um, the atmosphere is probably the most common unit that you're going to work with uh, when you work with um, gas laws and stuff like that. Usually they're done in atmospheres, but um, so that's where the unit of atmosphere comes from. And that is the conversion from atmospheres to uh, millimeters of mercury or vice versa. So we have millimeters of mercury, we have tor, and then we have atmospheres. Now let's talk about SI units for a second. There's an SI unit for everything, and the SI unit for pressure is the Pascal. So remember that uh, pressure is a derived unit. So uh, in, in order to express pressure uh, as an SI unit, we have to express it in terms of other SI units. And that SI unit is called the Pascal, or PA. And the Pascal is defined as one Newton per square meter. So the Newton, that is a unit of force, and the square meters is the unit of area. So it, this is pressure, because it's force over area. And one atmosphere is equal to 101,325 pascals. That's a pretty large number, so needless to say, usually uh, when we're talking about SI units, it's usually expressed in kilopascals, rather than pascals because uh, that avoids, you know, working with these large numbers. So there are other pressure units out there such as uh, pounds per square inch or inches of mercury and you can, you know, I, I would just, you know, consult your uh, chemistry text for a table uh, on those conversions. So I guess uh, before I end the video, let's um, Let's just uh, wrap up uh, what we've learned so far uh, about these pressure units. So I'll just write it down real quick. And I'll start with uh, the atmosphere. Okay. So we have one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury and since one millimeter of mercury is equal to one tor, we can also say that one atmosphere is equal to 760 tor. This one atmosphere, if we were to express this in, eight, in, in uh, SI units, would be 101,325 pascals. So there you go. There is just an introduction on pressure and pressure units.